tuning in to another episode of the Barardo Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Barardo. Each episode, I focus on giving you fun, entertaining content on health, happiness, positivity, and anything else that's important to us humans. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Instagram at the Barardo, and don't forget to subscribe to the show by visiting thebarardo.com slash the podcast, or just click that little subscribe button wherever you're listening to the podcast. Thanks again, and enjoy the episode. It's just funny. It's, it's funny you know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how. Come here, come here, though. Yeah, he's crazy, Dick. Who are you? We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Are you ready? So, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into today's episode, I do want to thank uh, our friends over at Superfat. If you guys don't know, Super Fat is probably my favorite snack on the planet. The reason I love Super Fat so much is they have keto-friendly, vegan-friendly, and paleo-friendly snacks. Everything from nut butters, which I am obsessed with. They have tons of great flavors. Everything from cacao coconut to MCT and probiotic macadamia nut butter. Um, just the, all their products are fantastic. They just launched some baking mixes, some fudge brownie baking mix as well as classic pancake baking mix. Uh, folks, both these recipes are keto-friendly, and it only takes a couple ingredients to make this thing. You simply throw the packet in to a couple eggs, some almond milk, and a little bit of coconut oil or butter, and boom, you got yourself uh, some, some delicious keto treats. They also have keto cookie bites as well. Just tons of great products. Um, I'm obsessed with this company. Uh, you hear me post about it all the time. If you want to learn more, go to superfat.com. Use the code Barardo10. You're going to get 10% off your entire order simply by listening to this podcast. So uh, thank you, uh, superfat.com. I also want to thank our friends over at Patch Vibes. So guys, visit patchvibes.com. You can use the code the Barardo. You're going to get a discount at checkout. One thing I love about Patch vibes is it's your one-stop shop to get some really cool swag they're known for their patches these custom patches uh you can literally put anywhere you can put them on purses laptops put them on jerseys like i do you can even check out their new line of shirts they have all types of really cool swag i think you guys will really love this company give them a shot Visit patchvibes.com. You will not regret it. And last but not least, I do want to thank Public Goods. Guys, Public Goods is the only company that you should be shopping at. Go to publicgoods.com. You're going to find healthy, sustainable, and beautiful products. Everything from you know canned goods, foods, cleaning supplies, toothpaste, body wash, you name it, Public Goods has it. These are the normal staples that you get when you go to the grocery store. The difference is now it's all in one place. With their membership model, they pass the savings along to you as the consumer and they ship directly to your home. Think of it like Amazon, but way better and way more good looking. Um, publicgoods.com, use the code TONYPGA. You're gonna get this kind of checkout. And again, guys, they have everything that you already have in your house. You only need to go to one spot, publicgoods.com. You can have your first order at no risk if you use the code TONYPGA, and you're also going to get a big discount. So thank you, Public Goods. You know, today's episode is a lot of fun because it, we kind of go a, a lot of different ways throughout the episode. I, I bring aboard uh, one of my old friends from high school, Steve Oppenheim. Um, I'll make sure I leave their links below, and uh, his business partner, Greg Studini. And they both started a, a really cool company, Fresh Air Matters. You can visit freshairmatters.com. Can't talk today. You can visit freshairmatters.com and you can actually see everything that they do. But they started this company in Texas. And man, it's, it's so important, especially with COVID right now. And little do we know how important the air is, right? We kind of take it for granted. So we kind of talked about the importance of that, as well as the companies and partners that they work with um, to ship nationwide products to help purify the air that uh, that we breathe in, breathe inside our home. So really cool conversation with them. We also uh, dipped into Steve's full-time job, which he's actually a teacher over in Texas. So we talked a lot about the educational system and, and how that's going virtually. And we dipped a little bit into social media. And uh, overall, it was a, it was a long conversation. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. I guarantee you're going to get some value out of it and you're going to have some laughs in the process. But uh, everyone, please help me welcome Steven and Greg to the podcast. I think I was, eight, oh, I, I was 18 or 19 at now at that point, I think. Yeah, this was, I think this was just before you started doing your, uh, your personal training. Yeah. Um, you got into that for a while. I remember that. Uh, yeah, but I'll think it was just for all I was like, you know, in, in every situation that you've ever been in, I've admired what you do. 
because of your tenacity and your compassion towards whatever it is that you're doing, you put everything you have into that position or into that idea. Going back to remember this, the movies. I'll never forget you worked at the movie theater, started out like wiping parts off of the movie theater seats, and you're working way up. And next thing I know, you're wearing a three piece suit, you're like seven years old, management at the movie. I'm like, damn, everything that he has done, he's done well. And I, I buy that. that. And your hair. I was like, I was looking at some uh <laughs> Look at some, some previous podcasts that you did. I was like, this dude's hair is on point. Yeah, it's not on point today because I'm. That's why I'm cranking the beanie. I, uh, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm losing it. Those guys that are growing older and and yeah. uh, are keeping their hair. I'm like, God, man, I'm so jealous of you guys. Yeah, dude, I'm I'm lucky. My dad, you know, being all Italian, we got we got yeah. a good yeah. we got some good hair. My dad's well, starting to uh, lose his. He's starting to lose his hair like at sixty. So I'm lucky. Yeah. It's your mom's side from everything that I'm, uh, I'm told. So oh, yeah? I, my mom, mom side, oh, my, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I was going to say my mom's like bald. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like your mom's dad, like your mom's, there it is. You know, the testosterone side, the male. Yeah. Gene <laughs> pool. Uh, cause like my grandfather's bald at like 25. My uncle's bald at 25. So I'm like, I made it out pretty well. I'm, uh, I'm fighting it. <laughs> my, 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 it's awesome. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah, um, I had to tell you that. No, dude, no, I appreciate the uh, the kind words. Yeah, it's been um, yeah, it's been quite a journey for me, and and uh, and you know, I think the one thing that kind of keeps me driving is like I don't I don't necessarily um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a I'm not a long term type long term goal type of guy. I just think right. I'm like anything I do, I just can't, and this could be a form of OCD or something like that, but I just can't, I can't finish it until I know it's completed type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like when I do a job or when I do, um, when I have a conversation or, you know, uh, whatever it is, I just, I have to make sure it's, it's the best. And cause the one thing I'm, I'm scared more than anything. And I think because my dad and my, my mom got divorced when I was so young, I always thought yeah. to myself, <clears throat> And this was like, I think when I was 11 or 12, they, they were separated. But the one thing that always kind of drove me was this could be the last day I'm with my dad or my mom or, you know, now obviously I, I have a wife and you got the kids. And that's the one thing that's always scared me is regret. Like if I have a conversation and I don't say what's on my mind or I don't give it a hundred percent, then I could walk away and, you know, end up regretting and I might not have that opportunity to do it. So that's always kind of been like my driving force. Yeah, it's funny you say that because the older I get, you know, the older I get, you learn from your experience and whatever you look back and it's, and talk to my wife about this. Um, Everything that I get into, if I have a thought, right, let's say that I've been in a couple of businesses, um, I have a couple ideas. When I get an idea, I fully engulf myself in that idea. And it may get to a point where I'm like, you know what, this isn't worth my time, but at least I know I put forth my best effort to get what I wanted to get to this point. And if I walk away, at least I know that I walked away giving it my best effort. Um, 100%. You know, fresh air matters, um, you know, when, when Greg approached me. By the way, Greg's having in, uh, internet issues, so he's trying to get back on. I told him that I, I stole Oh, is he? But, okay. Uh, get it going with you and me, and then we'll, we'll have this guy join in a little later. Fucking Greg. Yeah, Jesus. yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, he said he has a, a birthday party to go to also. So he was like, I'll be on there for about 15 minutes. I'm like, do your thing, man. I got you. Like, That's cool, you know, bro. I got you. Yeah, we, um, you know, I was going back to my my OCD craze. You see behind me, I got the guitars and stuff like that. I got into this, uh, you know, I've been playing drums since I was, what, 13? Um, and just kind of playing here and there. And I don't know if you remember Greg Budge from high school. Oh, yeah. Greg Budge. Greg Budge. Yeah, him and I were like in a band in, a band in high school ridiculous but yeah i started playing guitar and speaking of ocd like i fully hey, there he is hey uh, yeah, we're talking about right man we're talking about our ocd sorry about that guys oh, you're good brother you're good yeah i was okay. saying you know i have this like i have ocd but then i also have what's called music add where i'll learn like a specific riff on the guitar and i'm like all right i'm done with that next one or i'll get like the first chord i'm done with that next one yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. So I, I, I fully understand. Greg, too. You know, we all have OCD. We're all in that same boat. That's a good thing. Right. Yeah, it's man. Least I'm just, I mean, I'm glad I'm not 
flipping the light switch three times when I leave the room, but it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely pros and cons. That's for sure. I think like, as we get older, we realize how to like use it properly. Like I can't yeah. imagine, I can't imagine if I was OCD, like in high school, because I mean, it would just be, it'd be annoying the type of stuff that you would do. Cause like in yeah. high school, there was really no benefits to anything you do. You know, it's not like, right. like, what are you going to be OCD about? You know, writing your fucking geometry paper that you're never going to uh, use. Keep my folders in order. I wish I had a little bit of the OCD that I have now. Back when it was like, you know, it was go time. So like junior year into junior year, because I didn't give a oh, shit. Yeah. By the time I got to senior, sure. I'm like, look, I'm gonna get into Valencia. I'm gonna get into community college. Yeah. I don't care what my test score is. I don't care what my SAT score is. I know I'm gonna get in. I just wish I had that little bit. Of, oh, great. I was great. Quattro. I found that hat, by the way. I found it, and my first thought was, Quattro. <laughs> God, we were so stupid. Um, yeah, it was reminiscing. Y'all just reminiscing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was great, dude. Yeah, it was uh, great. Yeah, we used to. No, we, we found, we found, we found a way to make hats even cooler in high school. Yeah, we did. We did. <laughs> uh, we did listening, in, listening to the uh, some of your all your old episodes in your podcast and your intro, I was like, all right, are we gonna get the ladies and gentlemen? How are you? Or are we gonna get like the Joe Pesci? How the fuck am I so fucking funny? Like, <laughs> yes, he would use good clothes. He would use good clothes. Yeah, yeah, dude. Greg, uh, in high school, Tony and I had a little crew. I told you before that we were like obsessed with the mafia. We had a crew. We called ourselves yeah. the fellas. We were the fellas. <laughs> we were gangster, man. <laughs> the fellas. <laughs> so ridiculous. Yeah, speaking yeah, of which, I, I got Justin Perry is going to be on this podcast here soon. So, yeah. Well, awesome. yeah. That would be fun. I haven't talked to him in a minute. But Steve and I have been reminiscing. So, Greg, what what's a little bit of your your background, bud? How'd you guys meet? Uh, we met through um, our wives, actually. Um, he was with his oh. lady at the time, and she was good friends with my wife. And then I met my wife. And, uh, yeah, we, they hung out a lot. So we hung out all the time. He was just living here, what, a couple of years at that point from Florida. So, and yeah, I, I think just I've been got here back. like two and a half years when we met. Yeah, wow. something like that. And I just got back from Arizona finishing uh, mechanic school. And I was out in Orlando for a while. So we actually had something to talk to about. Talk about. Yeah, when yeah. our wives were hanging yeah. out, I was like, oh, man. I was out there for about a year. Yeah, we were, out in Orlando. There. I think we were there when I was living there. And I'm like, holy shit, we could have crossed paths. I never even known it. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Went out there to MMI for a year and then uh, finished up in Arizona and came back and then uh, had a good buddy of mine out of nowhere. This when all the boom with Countrywide went down. Um, yeah. a good buddy of mine just got hired up there after all that happened. He was just like, Hey, they're looking to hire people that don't have any background at all in the mortgage industry. They want everything to be new. Do you want to interview? So I went and interviewed and got into mortgages, started doing mortgages for seven, eight years and oh, sure. now I run a construction business. Yeah, it was good. It was a good time. It, was, it just starts to get hellish, man. When, uh, mm -hmm. it just, it starts to get hellish after a while. It beats you down. So I got out oh, of yeah. it and I think I would be. I'd be going nuts right now if I was in it because I know they're they're making a lot of money, but man, it's just brutal. It's wild. It's not work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's definitely. Here. I was gonna say it's definitely a it's a, it's an interesting time, but yeah, it's just so it's so up and down. You never know. It could be stressful one day. It could be, you know, not good enough to where you're not making money. It's you know, it's like the stock yeah. market. Eh. Yeah. Definitely. Which we've been playing with the stock market lately, so it's been good. Yeah, yeah now it's been good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, so you guys met, I you guys met through the, I work on that and the stock tips and I mean, these stock tips he give us, he's given us one, he's given me one that didn't do really well. But other than that, whenever he calls me, he's like, bro, get into this stock right now. And I text Greg, Greg, right now, do it. And I mean, <laughs> lo and behold, I'm we're gonna, we're gonna have later, <laughs> like, oh, we've been making money, man. I've been making money and the more we make, the more we get to put in. But yeah, so far they've all been pretty big hitters and they just keep climbing. It's like, okay, well, give me another tip. Yeah, now you're man. just waiting yeah. for the next tip. Like, just give me another tip. Hurry up. So, <laughs> what's the good, uh, well? What's the deciding factor on uh, how do you know if if stocks are going to be good enough to to pick up? Are you looking for a a certain price? Yeah, share, I, well, I mean, it's, uh, we like the lower ones because lately they've all been you know almost penny stocks below five, and then they're all climbing and climbing. Some sure. are a little long term. 
he'll usually say something like, or Steven will let me know, or he'll tell him, uh, you know, this was a long-term one, you know, put your money in and you gotta wait, it's going to go give it time. Yeah. And there, there's others that he's told us. And then in the last two or three months, they just shot up yeah. and then I'll sell as it goes up too. I don't know if Steven does, but I'll sell as it goes up and then buy back yeah. some more and then kind of take your profit off the top and just try to keep building. What do you guys use? You use like fidelity or some third party stuff? Or? Yeah. yeah. I got Robin hood, but it's, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of research and it's like, yeah, Robin is great for free trades and, you know, there isn't any kind of limited amount you need to buy. But during when it's tax time, you know, if you sell, you got to pay those capital gains taxes. So I'm like, well, let's get into Ameritrade. Let's get a little Roth IRA going, trying to get in there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah see, process, but, yeah. but now with the Roth IRA, you can only, it just depends where you put it. I think you can do like six grand a year or something you could do tax free. Yeah. And then anything uh, after I'm that. Sure. Bucks a month. But as long as you're keeping your money in your stocks, they won't, they don't charge you for the capital gains yeah, it's once you true. sell it and get that cash so if yeah, you just say yeah, leave it. yeah that that way i mean that's why you want to keep it as long as you can and then you know push it out when you need to right right exactly nice yes yeah, my job um, i'm so worried about because i've lost out on so much money i'm just like i'm done keep it don't touch okay. it but follow they call it follow fear of losing out yeah, yeah if you're losing out follow and fomo for my life <laughs> oh, yeah. and FOMO, story <laughs> <my> life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So you guys, you guys met through the wives. So there is, um, there is benefits to getting married. It's true what they say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the only one. Probably. Um, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so you guys are in Texas. Uh, regretfully, I see the cowboy sweater. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Regretfully. They, so, uh, they, they did what they had to do, except for lose. Yeah, I mean, I'm a you know I'm a Dolphins fan, so I can't really I can't really say anything. Man, that there. sucks, dude. I, I, they yeah. they should have gone. That's uh, they should have gone. It's just... Yeah, it was, it's been our best year since Jesus, maybe a decade. It yeah. seems like. And you did it with uh -huh. two quarterbacks that were nothing. Like yeah, they were Fitz nothing this season. Yeah, yeah. Fitz I'll get a, uh, how do you feel about two of them? You like him? Uh, I I mean I like him. You know he's a rookie, right? So. Uh, I mean, especially against the Bills last week. I don't know if you guys watched any highlights or games, but I mean, all those misca miscatches and I mean, a lot of it falls on the receivers. But I just I don't think he can go long yet, right? So it's a lot of pressure to put on a dude when you have it's your first year playing, you know, with the fence, and then you know you're you're kind of learning the offense, but then also this is like the best year that we've had in ten years. So it's almost like there's that pressure, but also I just don't know if he could throw long. Like I haven't yeah, really yeah. seen him consistently throw long, so it worries me a little bit. That um, hit, man. Yeah, and you know, the, and the injuries too, right? So it's like if I was the coordinator, I would have used Fitz a lot more because I really liked Fitzpatrick. I always have, but I think like using them back and forth, you know, it's it's kind of frowned upon. And in the NFL, to you want to stick with a consistent quarterback, you want, but I just think with the Dolphins just kind of learning you know, all these new procedures and everything they're trying to do. I think if you utilize both of them the right way and just went back and forth instead of relying on one, okay. I don't know. It worked. He was making it work. They won. I mean, it, they like I said it was one of the best seasons they've had in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as he works on those little things, I mean, I think he's the answer. But, you know, I've said that before with with QBs, with the Dolphins. We don't have the best luck. <laughs> I can say, man, the older I get, I just playing golf and watch golf like I have not. I did not watch a full football game all year long. No shit. I don't know yeah. why. There's nothing. I have nothing against it. You know, I'm just right. like I, I go play and watch golf. I'm just call me an old man with the gray and the beard, but I've been playing golf now for about, for about ten years, eleven years, twelve years. I mean, Greg and I oh, play nice. all the time, and I, I'm so obsessed. Actually, whenever I get back down to Orlando, Justin and I always hook up for a day and play. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where with my kids, I'm like. You know what? I love football. I, I played it my entire life. I have watched it my entire life. Uh, basketball, baseball, just play golf. Like yeah, I try to convince everything I can. And then uh, you know me as I'm a teacher full time. I don't know if you're aware of that, but um, every Tuesday I'm a sponsor of the golf club, and we get to go play over at one of the local golf courses for free. Oh, so I'm like, all right, fellas, and my kids. I'm like, I got you an opportunity to play. So now yeah. it's your time to go and practice because you will play the PGA. <laughs> I, don't to, I don't want to be that dad, but you know, I will be teaching you how to play. Um, yeah, dude, I, I agree. I think golf's a, a great sport. Anything that you know is is 
where you're playing by yourself. Uh, I, yeah. I really enjoy that a lot. That's why I love wrestling. When it's that yeah. one-on-one type of uh, competition, I think it's good because it, it's almost like a self-meditation. It kind of gets you in the zone and gets you focusing on one particular skill as opposed to like, you know, you're watching all these other sports and you're getting been out of shape and you're getting frustrated and you're putting all your energy onto things you can't control and it's kind of frustrating at some point that's why i stopped doing fantasy football i always used to do it and this was the first year that i haven't done it and to your point the only games i watched was the fins games occasionally like i would only watch it if i knew it was going to be a good game like of course i I watched last week and i watched it they play the pats or the jets or something like that but i'm not watching every single game because i realized that sunday's dictate how i treat my wife so like yeah. if if the dolphins lose like it's the worst sunday night of her life so um i'm like all right i'm just not even gonna worry about it you know and uh, it's actually yeah. been the best year the less stressful because those 16 weeks yeah. i wasn't stressing so yeah and that goes yeah, I, have, I, game, think, right? uh, I have, have a game couple, right? problems, so i'm on DraftKings all the time and uh, i have to watch the games because i'm constantly checking my DraftKings. Yeah, dude. I I can't do it no more. It's, it's Greg is your fantasy expert. So if you have any questions, just hit up Greg. He'll let you know. You're the guy. Man, I, would, yeah, I, I would love to do it for a, I would love to do it for a living. Uh, Bro, you man, should. There's some, there's some big should. time guys out there that do it. I mean, they. I mean, these guys getting they get in groups four or five of them, and they've come up with algorithms and shit. And they, mm-hmm. I mean, they put twenty bucks in. They probably do four, so they do twenty bucks a pop, and then the first place is a million dollars. I mean, they hit one. You know, they're good for the year. So. Bro, you should you should start a podcast on uh, Fan, uh, fantasy, draft, or fantasy. Yeah, it's a good yeah. idea. I mean, there's a there's Ooh. a lot of them out there, but you know, it's yeah, it's just like anything else. I mean, there's there's more podcasts popping up every single day, but people yeah. get value out of this stuff. Content, you have content, do you, you can talk about anything. Anything. How do you get recognized? How do you get recognized? How's the podcast? You just put it out there. And I don't even people... know, man. I'm just I just fucking. <laughs> I just talk into this Make mic them. and record it and put it out and see what happens. And it's, it's yeah. uh, somehow people uh, listen. Yeah. Greg, man, you missed the conversation before when you first signed on. I was, we're reminiscing a little bit and I was telling Tony about, you know, back in the day in high school in 15, 16, 17, everything that he's done, he's got, he's, he's has this tenacity where everything that he does, he gives everything he absolutely has. Going back to when he was working at a movie theater at 16 by 17, he was like management. Uh, I just remember seeing him work his, from the bottom of to the top, always, and then the podcast. I mean, look how professional this shit is. Be, you can't see even what you're doing. Look at this shit. You're 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 a pro over here. This guy. Eh, I appreciate it. Yeah, it's oh, it's getting there, man. Good. Well, like I wish you could see the setup. I'll shoot you a picture of it, but like the setup I have now and all the equipment. I mean, literally 18 months ago, it was me talking into my phone. You guys have? I know Steve. You don't have Apple. You got an Apple, Greg, or no? Yeah, yeah, I use Apple. Okay. So they have voice memo. I'm sure they have something like that on Android, but it was me talking into my mic, like my headset, my wired headset, and I would just press voice memo, and I would just record just me talking for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever, just a lot of stupid shit, almost like a journal, and then I would just put it out on my website because I've always had a website that I used to do blog recipes and shit. Now it's mainly podcasting, but... I would just upload to that website and that's it. Like that was my podcast. I didn't video it. I didn't do nothing. It was just me talking into the phone. And then now 18 months later, you know, it's, it's gotten to this. And, you know, I got uh, people that listen to me all over the world, which is pretty cool. I could see all the analytics oh, cool. and subscribers and it's, it's wild, man. And I never thought, I don't really think this is going to turn into anything. It's just kind of something I like to do just to shoot the shit. That's when it takes off is when you're just doing it for fun. Right. Well, I always think of it like, you know, I mean, you guys know this, right? So, like, if you're not hanging out with the wives and you just get together with the boys and those conversations that you have with your friends, those are the best conversations. Right. And I thought to myself one day right before I started the podcast and I was like, and I had like a housewarming party and all of our, well, at the time it was my girlfriend, which is now my wife, but they, everyone left the room and it was like me and like four or five of my really close friends. And we're just like shooting the shit. And I looked around as everyone's talking and we're busting balls and shit, right, Steve? You remember what that's like? And oh, it was like the it was like the fellas is what it was like. And we we're busting each other's balls and I look around and I'm like, wait, no one's recording this. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. This is stupid. Why aren't we like everyone in the world needs to hear this right. conversation right now? So I was like, I'm starting a podcast, and that was it. 
So, that's awesome. Yeah, that sounds like kind of like where we are now and how we got started with Fresh Air Matters. I mean, Greg yeah. fucking his boy, and then boom, an idea is born. Yeah, which is which is wild, dude. So you were you were telling me a little bit about it. So what's up with so the company's Fresh Air Matters? Yes, yeah, sir. Fresh Air Matters company name. Uh, I mean, we started out we with got- Greg had one idea, and boom, we just floated into indoor air quality. Yeah, dude. So, so Greg, Greg, what was this? What was this idea? What happened with it? Uh, man, basically, uh, I had a buddy of mine who's uh, had a couple of HVAC companies, and um, he was very successful very quickly and would sell them. And then he was telling me about the, uh, you know, the biggest problem with them is not changing the filter as much as you should. You know, everybody says they do it, but who actually does it and does it on time? When you finally go do it, you know, it's disgusting looking. So he would just threw a bunch of information out there to me, and I just thought, man, I don't want to go through years of having to go through hours of working on HVAC to get an HVAC license. And, you know, I, I don't really want to do that. And then I just came to the idea of, you know, why don't I just help people maintain their HVAC simply by changing their filter? I know a lot of people here in Texas, it's, it gets pretty hot in the summer, obviously. Um, their attics are their uh, AC units are in the attic. So most of them don't want to climb in their attic, don't want to go up there and change it. They wait till winter time. So it's sitting there getting dirty. Then their AC breaks down in the middle of the summer. It's a huge problem. And then on top of that, my daughter has uh, pretty bad allergies. So Mm -hmm. the constant changing of the filter with good filters keeps that air quality cleaner in the house. I mean, you're sitting in there, sleeping there, slash sitting in there half the day, all the time, every day. So breathing that air in, keeping that clean and keeping those allergens down help a lot. That's so, crazy, man. And so the actual filters, are those getting shipped? Like, do you guys do, um, like, how do you know what filters they use? Do people just send in what they need and then you ship it to the house? Like, how's that work? No, we actually physically go in and change it. So you have a bunch of companies that are already, you know, you can go to Home Depot and order them or you can go online and order yeah. them. So what we actually do is go in and change it for you and wow. vacuum off the uh, vent, your return vent. We'll go ahead and vacuum any return vent you have so that stays clean. There's not dust all over that, um, as well as change that filter each time. So it's running at optimal uh, capacity as far as our efficiency for your unit, as well as keeping your air clean in the house. And then we just got bigger into it, kind of rolled from there with the whole fresh air idea. You know, so now we start selling purifiers. Um, we got filters for our purifiers and we're starting to bring on more brands that we can sell, kind of starting a, more of a e- e-commerce or e-market with our website as far as selling products. But we still do the physical change of the air filter at least yeah. where we're at right now in our area dude yeah, yeah that's, that's the you know, we talked about you first you know greg and i were you talking about you know do we want to expand uh and i think the more we do this the more potential we see in it and you know going from just the ac filter replacement to residential air duct cleaning that aspect would mostly be where we are until we have the opportunity to expand but then we get into the indoor air quality products you know from multiple manufacturers it's like those can be shipped anywhere this that's you know let's let's do that and then Hopefully, maybe one day get to the point where we can go to city to city and offer the filter replacement. But you know, those two aspects of the business, although they're local, the air quality products that's nationwide. Yeah, yeah. And then quality air as well. We want to get into. We're starting to expand it to you know checking your air. We come in and do that. We want to go ahead and check your air quality. Tell you where you stand right now. Tell you if you have bad air, good air. If you know you need to get a purifier, know if your house is fine. You know mold things like that. You could check for those things. Just try to keep. Come in there and give them a full, full air quality check. And then, hey, on yeah. top of that, we can get built to change. So, yeah, dude, that's wild because I think a lot of people don't realize how important, like, I mean, that the air that you're breathing in, and air is one of those funky things, right? Especially with COVID. Now we realize that something yeah. that is deadly that can shut down the whole world, you can't even see. So, imagine what else are you breathing in that you can't see you know like me i have a history of asthma i I had asthma when i was a kid and thank goodness it disappeared somehow i didn't even know it it did that but like you know yeah yeah, like like 15 years ago i i didn't have any issues but i used to do the inhaler like the work so it was it was rough um but like my wife has really bad allergies as well and it's it's funny because it'll be a nice clear day nice and sunny in florida you know it's not like the pollen season and she won't sneeze at all when we're inside and then we come or excuse me when we're outside and then when we come inside the house she starts sneezing and she's allergic to apparently the test we did she's allergic to like dust mites and stuff yeah and it's super crazy because like we're manic about cleaning 
But then when we first bought this new home, that's what someone said to us was like, you know, just so you know, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with what's on the counters. It has to do with what's in the air. And all that yeah, is dictated off door, of... People don't understand that if you walk yeah. in and out of the house, the second you open that door, you're letting everything in. So you can be manic, you can be OCD about cleaning your house, you know, every single day, but you can't ultimately completely eliminate dust unless you live in a bubble. Exactly. Um, so that's where our products. And, you know, Greg and I, we test our products out. Um, and I just got to the point now where I had to replace one of our, our filters uh, within one of the air purifiers. And I got, I was like, this is disgusting. I mean, it's caked with dust and dirt and we have dogs. And it's like, wow, I don't realize that that's in your home, you know? So mm -hmm. getting to the health, uh, the health aspect of it and, and health wise, it's like, this is more than just, you know, a filter replacement company. Like we're actually getting to the point where we are discussing your health, you know, right. and, and, you know, br what you're breathing in, it may not, it may not be a day, a week, a month. It could take years to get to a point um, where you start to see the effects of poor, indoor air, uh, poor indoor air quality. But ultimately, if you're breathing that in, you're going to get sick sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, idea, the idea behind it is like, let's, let's also help people. Why not? Why not? Yeah, Why not? No, that's, that's great, man. Yeah, I, I love the uh, I, lo I love the whole business model and I love the whole attitude of it. And I don't think there's anything, I mean, that I know of, at least in Florida, that, I mean, aside from my HVAC company, but even still, I think it's a ripoff for what I pay for, you know, service and cleaning and stuff. Because most of the stuff I could do on oh, my yeah. own. But yeah, like yeah. to me, the, the filter, to your guys' point, the fr filter is like, that's the big boy. And then oh, yeah. how am I going to like... Like if I want my air tested, I can't just call my AC company and they're like, oh yeah, we'll come out and test your air. No, they're not going to do that. And even if they were to do it, they would probably do something like, yeah, we'll come in, we'll test it. Then they'll test the air and they'll lie to me and say it's dirty anyway. And they'll charge me like $400 to right. fix it. So, yeah. and they'll say, oh, it's your AC, but really it's just your air. Right. And it has a lot to do with the quality of your air and all that. Cause I know Greg, you talked about like testing out the air quality and stuff like that. Are you guys doing anything right now? In the um, we're about to get into it. Uh, we've got a couple of products that um, one of our companies that we're selling for has some air quality check products. And we're kind of just right now researching and looking up what's the better one or best ones to get. And then we'll probably invest a little bit of money into it, um, get those products and start testing probably our own air first and give it maybe, I don't know, I would say a test period of a couple of weeks or a month, whatever makes sense to see what we're doing to make it better. Um, and if it's working, if for the test, and then at that point, probably start offering the service. Manufacturer that we that we offer, uh, it's called Wind W Y N D, and they have some pretty good air quality uh, trackers that you just put in your wall, and it'll it'll tell you you know different percentages of, of what's in the air and stuff like that. Um, and once you reach a certain number, you know you want to keep that consistency. You know we come in, chart that, kind of show you, hey, look, it's been six months. This is where you start. This is where you are. This is where you want to maintain. Um, so as Greg was saying, you know once. We've had a request for it, so you know we're gonna we're gonna start getting those uh, the wind air quality trackers in their homes and kind of just educate them on where you are, where you want to be, and how we're gonna get there. I like that. It'd be cool. I always thought to myself, it'd be cool if um, like because my wife has the allergies and you know we're trying to uh, measure the air. Like it'd be really cool if there was something where that you could just press a button or a link up to your phone and it could measure monthly, weekly, whatever. It could measure your air and see if there's toxicity levels right oh that's what the tracker that we offer it does that it has an app for your phone and you can go on there and you can see kind of the different variations of uh of oh, what's no in way. the air absolutely yeah it'll it'll alert you when when if they have an influx of you know if you're i don't know about where you are but around here um we're in an area that's consistently building there's always uh, controlled burns around here. There's always construction going on. So you'll get an alert, uh, high risk of, of, uh, you know, smoke inhalation or, or whatever from, you know, Oh, it's because of controlled burns. And then you can kind of adjust your, uh, air quality product to help combat whatever it is that's in your, your, uh, indoor air. Oh, that's rad. Yeah, that's rad. And what is that? That's an app or is that what you guys use? Yeah. Uh, it's no, it's, it's, yeah, it's a product we have company that we offer. It's, uh, by wind. Um, and they offer, oh. Yeah, they offer the uh, the air quality tracker you put it on your wall. Download the app. The app is connected to the to the uh, unit on your wall, and you can go on. If you're not home, you just go on. And say, okay, let's let's see what the air is today in my house, and go on your app. Boom, 
you know what it is. You know what what's in your home, what's circling into your air, stuff like that. Oh, that's rad. That's cool. And what? And I know you guys told me this before, but what's the website? Where can people go to to check your stuff out? <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> it's uh, freshairmatters.com. Just plain and simple. Easy. Freshairmatters.com. And, and I'm sure you got all your social media and everything on there too. Oh, yeah. Everything's on there. Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. We're all we're all on there. Nice. Um, you know, we've got manufacturers. We've if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, and you're listening to this, you know, obviously we offer the AC filter replacement. We've got the residential air duct cleaning going. But again, the products that we offer uh, are shipped all over the U.S. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so even here in Florida, if you're listening to this, you can oh, you can oh, pick yeah. some stuff up. Go to freshairmatters.com. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yes, yeah. We're that's trying awesome. to build, you know, the brand recognition because obviously, when you think about any kind of product, the first thing you think about is, oh, I'll just go to Amazon, right? So mm-hmm. we're trying to build the brand recognition where it's like, oh, I need an air quality product. I'm going to go to Fresh Air Matters because I know what they have. I know what they offer. I know the name. Um, so, you know, obviously with any business, um, brand recognition is, is obviously your main goal. You know, people, people need to recognize the logo, you know, recognize who we are, but then the step becomes, how are we going to get there? So that's exactly. what we're trying to be part of is that true one-stop shop for indoor air quality. I love it, man. No, no, it's a, it's a great, uh, sounds like a great company and, you know, I'm happy for you guys. I'm glad, um, that I could learn a little bit from it too. So I'll definitely check some shit out and pick some stuff up for the wife because she needs it for sure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you guys got, you guys got the name too. Like you guys got that shit on lockdown. Great, yeah, man. I think that's, that's how we came up with the company name was we, we, I don't know. We probably, we spent hours looking for a yeah. website, a domain name. We had a list. List. Matters was there and uh, I was like, shit, well, let's just call a company that because we got the domain. The yeah. name makes great sense. I think we just lost yeah, it. It's funny because four or five years. Greg, goes, what about, Greg goes, what about Fresh Air Matters? And I was like, Fresh Air Matters, and, and he goes, does it? I was like, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah. it sucks. That's awesome. Was this, uh, okay. did you get, when did you guys start this company? September of 2019. Okay, cool. Yeah, so, so it was pre-Floyd protests. Nice. Yes, yeah, it was pre Floyd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> that was what I was worried about. I was like, great, now we're going to get the users. But it wasn't, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't pre-BLM, though. BLM was already around prior to that, remember? They yeah. I think but we, it, we do a lot of matters. There's a lot of thing out there that says matters, and we were finally just as we were thinking, it's like well, fresh yeah. air matters too. And of course, we thought it was going to be taken. Right. It was, it was wide open, man. <laughs> well, you know, kudos to you guys. I mean, because as long as you didn't uh, like, you know, when did they happen in June or July? So if you came out with you know the company like two weeks after that, you probably would have got some backlash. But you're good now. It's right. <laughs> Yeah, I promise you anything off. I, promise. No, it's, I, I don't think there should have, would have been any backlash. You know, fresh air matters. All people say Black Lives Matter. Yes, and so does fresh air. We exactly. all need yeah. fresh air, right? So, exactly. yeah, really. I mean, you know, you're just pointing out the obvious of what matters. <laughs> exactly. You know? exactly. So it's, that's Food perfect. matters. Not not com, guys. Not to the movement. Just want to put that out there. I don't want to trivialize the movement. <laughs> That's a good one too. Foodmatters.com. We should just buy yeah. up all, yeah, all, matters. all, all, all matters.com. All the URLs. No, but it, like in terms of uh, Texas, because I know, you know, I got a couple of buddies, like I was telling Steve. So I got friends that are out in Houston and, and um, uh, Galveston and shit like that. And uh, they said that Texas pretty much is like after, you know, this pandemic. and everything, I mean, they're pretty much open. I mean, it's like Florida now. I mean, I imagine yeah. everyone's yeah. kind of back to normal yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, we've kind of stayed open. I mean, besides that little close we had there for a while, everything's back to normal. It's n- now the cases yeah, are continuing to go up. But. Yeah, just wear a mask is what everyone's saying, obviously, and just kind of yeah. pay attention to your surroundings. Um, and being a teacher, I have to wear a mask all day. The kids have to wear a mask all day. Where we offer virtual, um, but every quarter, you know, parents can request for their kids to either come back on campus and do face to face learning or go to virtual. And I mean, last. Uh, last quarter, we had like 65 kids come back, and only two switched from face to face to virtual. So, you know, we tell the kids just wear a mask, make sure you guys know your surroundings, but you're not going to stop, you know, 500, uh, 500 to 900 10 to 13 year old kids from from getting together and hanging out. Right. So obviously, we have we have the uh, the COVID precautions and and um, all that yeah. stuff, and it happens. We have people come down with it, but um, you know, as long as you quarantine and and kind of trace your steps and you're not kind of licking their faces. Yeah. So, so hey, uh, 
I apologize, man. Okay. I, hey, Tony, I, I, wanna, I appreciate it, man. Um, I have to I apologize, guys. I got to bounce out real quick. The neighbors have a little part for their kid, and uh, I told them they had to wait for me to do this. But I was having fun shooting the shit, so I'm probably like 25 minutes late. <laughs> uh, no, it was, it was uh, great to meet you, bro. Man. Yeah, you too. It was good meeting you, and then I hope we can do this again soon, man. Hell yeah, man. Enjoy. All right, you guys have a good one. Have fun, All right, brother. So Steve, so being a being a teacher, what was the uh, like? I mean, as of now, because things are a little funky with COVID. Um, yeah. Like, are are you seeing that people are kind of like a little hesitant to go back to school, or are people kind of getting used to this new? Yeah, virtual... at first, you know, obviously, I think with when everything kind of went down, you know, and I try and tell people, obviously, you know, everyone's not going to agree on everything, so right. we went into everything everything shut down you had your people that were for it had those that were against it um it's all about the resources and understanding of, of what's going on so when school first started back in august you know we still were kind of unclear of number one what the hell's going on what is this thing how can we combat it how are we going to work towards it but then more importantly it's how are we going to protect our kids from it um but right. then we'll kind of also misunderstand and, and kind of forget that yes kids go to school teachers there too so the argument was well my kids can't really get it because at the time it was kids can't get it. it's no big deal yeah but if they go to school um there are still you know adults there too that can get it so right. just with the people alone you know when school first started so we had a lot of kids that uh, i think we were at like 48 percent were virtual you know and then what 51 were 49 51 something like that it was three half and half were virtual face to face but like I said, you know, every nine weeks when the quarter ends, uh, teachers and students are allowed to kind of um, change their plan, change the idea of staying virtual or going back to face to face or vice versa. Um, and every quarter we've had of an impact. So I think the the because we understand what's going on more, we know we have we know the resources that we need for it. Um, yes, the hospitals are seeing more of an uh, you know an influx of patients, but at the same time we know kind of how to combat it. And we know that for the most part, you know, obviously you're going to be okay, but yeah. you, gotta, you have to understand that it's not just you. You know, I think that's, that's the kind of the big thing that we're kind of trying to teach the kids is, yeah, you may not, you may not get it, but, and this person that you know may have gotten it and they may have only had, you know, a day where they didn't feel well, but it's not just about you. Um, so yeah, just, I think just with the understanding it's, it's uh, kind of getting back to normal and, you know, we're yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's so important too. like just being, I mean, we talked about this being in high school together, like just in school in general, no matter what part of school that you're in as a child, it's so crucial to get that social interaction and to be yeah. around kids and, and, you know, to, to pick up on each other's personalities. I mean, cause that's oh, kind of how your personalities. Yeah. Like that's how your personalities form in my opinion. Like I wouldn't be the guy I am today if we weren't you know, dicking around in high school, you know, oh, you, me, Justin, and the boys just walking yeah, around, you know, being understand. clowns. Yeah, that's kind of what, that's what created us. And I think we just got to be careful of like, even though it's kind of beneficial that we have the opportunity to go virtual and all that, mm -hmm. we got to teach the kids and we got to really push kids hard, I think, to to want to go out. Because it's sexy and indoors, man. Like, it's fun being virtual. I mean, imagine like us being in, you know, in high school right now. And imagine us having yeah, the opportunity right. to go virtual instead. Oh, of that course, would be a terrible student. horrible student. Like I would want to go, I would want to be home all day and I would probably, you know, dick around. My parents wouldn't take it seriously because they were probably working at the time. So I'm at home playing Call of Duty most of the time. I mean, that's probably what would happen if I was in high school right now virtually. So, right. you know, yeah. we just got to make sure we're, uh, we're driving that home. The only thing I don't believe in really is college. And I think, I don't know if we're on the same page with that, but I only did two semesters at Valencia and I was like. I <laughs> the way I see it with that kind of stuff, it, you know, if you want to tie in, is that light too bright, by the way? I feel like it's too bright, no? No, nah, mine's probably just too moody. Okay, okay. too moody. I'll back up a little I'm, bit. No, I'm just go back to what you're saying. Super moody. Um, super moody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, was, I have some students that uh, I teach eighth grade, so some are now in high school, obviously, and. Mm -hmm. I'll get emails here where it's just like, Mr. O, this, this sucks. Like I was virtual for a while. I'm not doing well. And I say when you're in school, obviously uh, speaking from experience, it's the idea of learning from your house, learning from your bed, learning from 
you know, what you're comfortable with is great on paper, but it doesn't work for everybody. And mm. if you're in that position where it's like, you're not doing well in school, you're not turning things in, you know, you're being lazy, you know, you have every excuse possible not to do your work because you are at home. Sometimes it's okay to, to really kind of accept that and be like, look, I, I really need to go back to school because I'm not doing well. So yeah, it's the same thing with going to college. You know, I don't think college is for everybody. Uh, the older I get, the more that I learn that experience is what people want. And obviously, you know, with different positions and different careers, that piece of paper that says, hey, look what I finished, but you don't need that. Um, so it's, with virtual and college, you know, it, it, it's person to person. It's it's idea to idea. It's preference to preference, you know? Yeah, dude, exactly. And you know, it's very similar to, you know, the job path that you want to take too. like I was just I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do and I want to try out everything so I knew in order to figure out what I I wanted to do with my life was to just get out there and do it and figure it out you know I didn't want to waste from 18 to you know 21 22 my golden years I didn't want to waste that inside a uh, you know dorm or anything I wanted to get out and experience it and um, at the time I think like when I did go to community college, it was starting to get a little bit more, um, not sexier, but like it was, it was culturally accepted if older people went to college, right? Like, yeah. you know, when, when our parents oh. were, yeah, yeah, when our parents were going to college, that wasn't a thing, but right. like when we were going to college, that was like the height of like 40 year olds showing up to classes and us like poking each other being like, you know, you see this fucking yeah. old dude going to class. Like, so it started yeah. kind of getting things going. So I always thought to myself, like when I dropped out of college, I was like, dude, one of my classmates that I used to study with was 45 years old. Like I can always come back yeah. here. It's always good but, here. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm not going to waste my time. Like when my brain starts to develop, right. you know, cause your brain isn't done developing until you're 25. Right. So that's when I want to soak up all, all of life's juices, you know, and that, right. that yeah. I, was, uh, I was on a 13 year plan. You know, I went to Valencia, yeah. uh, I took a semester, you know, going back to what you're saying about our parents um, and that generation, my dad didn't, he went to tech school. Uh, my mom went to a semester at community college and, and kind of life came up and snuck up on him. And then here I am. But you know, my dad always told me when you're 18, you move out, you get a full-time job, you pay your own bills, you buy your own things, but you still go to school. I had that the Florida prepaid. I had that the idea of going to college was always there um, yeah. with my dad. But you know, yeah. growing up listening to him say, "No, when you're 18, you're an adult. You move out." So at 17 years old, I moved out. Uh, by 18, I had an apartment, you know, with with roommates, and I had a full time job. But I was. Uh, it just took a while for me to realize that if I'm really going to get through this, I really can't mess around. And it's nearly impossible to have a full time job and go to school full time and graduate in the four years. So yeah, so dude, it took me 13 years to get done. Uh, it took me like, I don't know, what, 10, 11 years to get to community college. I moved out here. Uh, I Bank of America at the time. I, I had, you know, kind of an epiphany and um, I quit Bank of America to go to school full time at the University of North Texas. Um, and while I was at UNT, um, I was going to school for business. I got my associates in general business. I got to UNT and I realized I don't want to get my degree in business, you know, and I'm doing some research and I realized that the average college student changes their degree plan three times. So I changed my degree plan. Yeah. Oh, so my last, you know what, I'm going to be a teacher. Like when I worked at Bank of America, I had a couple of uh, clients of mine that were, were high school students. And then I watched them grow up into college and I was able to have this, um, this connection with them. And I was able to really um, build a relationship with them to kind of come across as like, being that teacher kind of person. Um, and I'll never forget, there was a, a kid who came in, he played football. And his, I feel so bad for this kid to this day because just told him, if you ever get a C, you can't play football until you get your grade up. So he went to a private school um, and his team was in the playoffs and he got a C. And his parents said, you can't play because you got a C. And he's in my office. I can tell he's been crying for like three days. His eyes are, you know, just so red and, and swelled up and his parents, he went to the bathroom and his parents are like, Hey man, look, you, you're young enough. You look young enough to where I feel like you can connect with him better than we can. Can you talk to him about why we did this and how it's not, it's, it's not the end of the, end of the world for him. And I said, to be honest with you, I wouldn't have done that as a parent, but yes, I'll talk to him. They went to the lobby. The kid came in, I talked to him and um, 
you know, we just kind of connected. And I told him, look, man, I'm at the time I was like what, 27, 28. I'm like, I played football in high school. I was on teams that were successful. I was on teams that were god awful. I mean, you and I, our senior year, our teammates. So, and I told him like, it's going to be fine. You know, you're going to go to college. It, this is not what defined you as a person. And he left smiling. And at that point I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do with my life. I want to be a teacher. And that's what I went for. That's um, awesome. And unfortunately, in the career field that I chose in regards to being a teacher, um, you needed a college degree. Otherwise, I'm with you. You don't necessarily need a college degree to be successful in, yeah. in a career. But, you know, unfortunately, yeah. being a teacher required it. Yeah. And again, I think, you know, things like that are important. Obviously, doctors and engineers and, you know, all these cats are, you know, you need a degree. You need to go through that because we want those we want those folks to be educated. But, you know, oh. if, if, if you were like me and trying to figure it out, I think I think there's pros and cons to it. But I was having this debate with my buddy the other day because he's like, uh, you know, he's he's got two kids now and he's growing up. and We're talking about college. And I'm like, dude, college is different now because it's it's more like hospitals where, you know, they just want to accumulate dollars. Right. Like you're a number. Oh, yeah. Great business. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's it's so, it's so uh, it's so unfortunate. I mean, you look at like what. Like if someone told me that you can make money off a podcast when I was in high school, I probably would have started a podcast in high school. I think and, the same thing. I'm like, all right, Doc, where are you? I need the DeLorean to come here so I can go. <laughs> like it's it's so crazy, dude. And, and you know now we're in a different generation to where they can make money just you know using their phones. Oh, and I, I mean, about now it might not be like that in ten years. Maybe yeah. something new is going to come out to where it'll seem like oh. phones are stupid. That's um, life, man. That's evolution, though. I mean, yeah, it's, we're it's evolution. Constantly evolving emotionally, technology mm-hmm. is crazy. You know, going back to where we were, remember the Razor phones? Look at them now, and it's like, oh, what is dude. this dinosaur? <laughs> so, uh, you know, we um, we did a little a little survey in class the other day, and, and I wanted the kids, uh, we're talking about uh, the age of enlightenment and stuff like that, and, and I'm like, look, I want you guys to um, uh, write down a list of celebrities or, or, or culture shakers of people that you think have changed culture. Like what is culture? You know what culture is? How did these people change culture? Every single person on their list was a YouTuber or someone on TikTok. No no sports figure, or any actors or any musician. It was a YouTuber. I had to ask most of the kids. I'm like, I don't even know who this person is. I know Dan TDM because of my kids, but at the same time, I'm like, what does it mean to be famous nowadays? You know, like no, like like, oh. the, like there was no like Jackie Robinson. There was no right. yeah. <laughs> nothing. No Michael Jordan. There was none of that. A couple of kids had like Kevin Durant, um, and I hate to say it because I just can't stand these people. But Kim Kardashian was on there, and I got to a point during the day where I was like, "Look, do not put Kim Kardashian on this list. Please do not put her on this list. Like she's a celebrity for being a celebrity, and I can't go into why she's a celebrity as a middle school teacher, right?" right. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, you know, just like some of the uh, things that are around now, I'm like, gosh, if I was to be an eighth grader in 2020, 2021, knowing what I know now, obviously, you know, that song, you know, if I only knew now what I knew then, uh, right. it's, it's crazy at, at the uh, the prospects of what could have been. Yeah, dude, it's, it's super interesting. And then also you think to yourself, like, because we don't really necessarily think about this all the time, but. You know, as I have all these conversations, especially like old friends and things like that, like it always kind of reminds me of, you know, when we were in high school, our parents were probably thinking the same thing about us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, when we would have the flip phones and playing Snake on the phone and they're like, oh, my God, Snake. This is, you know, it's like (laughs) and then, you know, now we're and that was not that long ago. That's what is so fucking so crazy. I can't even fathom. I think about that. I talk to my wife about that all the time. I'm like, in the grand scheme of time. You know, let's look back. Jeep, for example, Jeep has had their 80th anniversary. Back when we were in kids learning about World War II, it wasn't that long ago. I'm like, no. oh yeah, that's my grandfather was in World War II, and now it's like, holy shit, I'm 35 years old. That was 80 years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, and all the musicians we looked up to, all all of the artists and the movie stars and the athletes, they're all in their 50s and 60s and 70s, and some even passing away. And I'm like, what is going on? But yeah, you know, going back to when uh, we were kids, my dad would always say, you know, he would give me advice and he was, this is going to happen. And the older that I got, I'm like, damn, dad, you're a fucking prophet. Like everything that he has said has come true. You're going to do this. Yeah. You're going to feel this way with these people. And you met my dad. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, perfect comment. Well, bro, like what's yeah. what's even more crazy is like, especially with this election, everything that passed up and, you know, there's a lot of crazy shit that's going on and there's going to be crazy shit that's going to keep going on, you know, when it comes to yeah. elections and all that. But, you know, it made me think the other day where, yeah, things are really fucked up right now. But I mean, we, like the United States was founded 300 years ago. You know, 320 years ago, 1776, however, whatever that math is. That's only three people ago. Yes. Maybe yeah, four. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it's, so it's, it's a few. Yeah. So, I mean, like, um, if, I mean, whoa, each, each person lives to, you know, 80. I mean, think about yeah, it. It's about not that. that now, it's 75 not, is, our, is our average lifespan. Life there. expectancy, yeah. Which is going up, which yeah. is positive. Oh, yeah. But, Modern um, medicine. Technology. Dude, it's just not that long ago. It's madness, man. Oh, I know. So, no. Um, and, you know, it's something we really got to take into consideration and be like, okay, I mean, we're going to get things wrong, but things keep getting better. And, you and know, we just have to, you know, with, yeah. the, with everything that's going on now, um, I try and keep, I try and stay level headed with everything. You know, right. I, I, I'm, I'm in the middle when it comes to politics. Um, yeah. it's all sick with, you know, I want to talk about. Uh, the media, this, the media, that. This is the media has been around since the Boston Tea Party. You know, the Boston right. massacre. Five people died. Was it five or three people died? Not really a massacre. You know, right. it's, <laughs> when I talk about fake news, look at the Boston massacre. Right. I mean, that's what's a revolution. You know, we've we've been doing this for three hundred years now, so it's it's all cyclical. It it that's why you learn history. Um, right. And I feel like. You know, with everything that's been going on, you know, the past four, eight, whatever years, I like it because I think at the end of the day, when all the dust settles and everyone kind of gets their sanity back and mm -hmm. once everything goes away, I feel like as a whole, we'll be more unified because we've all been through this together. We know what the opposite side is. I hate to kind of, I hate to bash this, this industry and the aspect of technology, but you look at at social media and that's kind of added fuel to the fire when it comes to you For know sure. the ad between two political parties and everyone has a platform now so everyone's a, a professional everything uh, you mm -hmm. know unfortunately you have people who just purposely look for um arguments on social media and i want to say that it'll bring unity but at the same time i feel like it'll just bring more professionals you know to the forefront yeah. of the party. Yeah, so, well, that's, yeah, man, that's cool. Cool. yeah and, that, and that's that's the problem that's that's what i've really strived to do with this podcast is you know be objective and and have people on you know uh that know different things and then things that i don't know about and things i do know about and constantly learn and things like that and i think if more uh more platforms kind of you know focused on that as opposed to this is the way that things are because i think we we forget that time and time again, year over year, decades over decades, if you look back, we consistently make wrong judgments on things and we consistently have incorrect information as humans. Right. You know, like, again, when we were kids, you know, this is 18 years ago, 20 years ago, wasn't that long ago. When we were in school, we were told that you had to drink milk every day. Right, exactly. Like that was a fact. Like it wasn't, no one was questioning it. There was no newspaper that said, well, maybe there's a 1% chance. They were so confident in it, but we were wrong. Now these are being approved facts because science is getting more and more intelligent and we've, we're learning more things. And, you yeah, know, social right. media and technology is a big part of that. But, you know, that's the problem is like if you're out there, you know, and you're doing a podcast or you're doing a YouTube channel or you're doing TikToks, to say that this is for sure a fact, even if you read about it, right, is just ignorant. It's just ignorant right. thinking. And yeah. I mean, being a teacher, I'm sure you're you're familiar with it all the time because you're probably looking at like books that we used to read when we were in high school. That now, if you teach that to kids, it's like blasphemy. Oh yeah, like oh, I, I can't even talk about that. You can't even yeah. talk about it because yeah. you, we realized yeah. that it was it was such a shitty time back then. And yeah. we thought it was the right thing. I mean, presidents had slaves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's, so that's we, the thing you about also, we've is, made is mistakes. The time <laughs> exactly. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> you, know, you go back to those times um, and we talk about that. And it's like we understand that we look back at history and they may not have been the best people. But politically, 
they were geniuses and we wouldn't be here without the 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 suffering and it's it's so difficult to talk about because of how bad it was and it's such a such a stain on our history but at the end of the day you got to be proud of who you are you know we got where we are based on where we were um and and exactly yeah and and if you learn from your mistakes and as time goes on you just hope to educate the youth to kind of do better and i think well but i think with with cell phones you know we have Everything we could possibly ask for is at our fingertips. You can literally sit on your couch all day and have everything you possibly need delivered to your house in a matter of minutes. Um, so with the fact that with with uh, information, there's so much information out there, but there's so little time to go and, and do the research and see what's true. You know, you try to teach these kids, like, not everything you see is fact. Not everything you read yeah. is true. Unfortunately, we're not. We're in the meme generation where every meme is absolute fact. Yeah. yeah. And like one thing I one thing I have been trying to do lately, especially when I talk more, because I've done a couple podcasts, you know, political wise, mainly just rants and things like that. But those are the only ones that I'll actually like prepare for because I'll what I'll do is now is I'll find something that because I don't necessarily have an agenda. Um, like I've I voted Republican before, but I've also voted Democrat before because I don't I don't necessarily like. I don't like a lot of things that each party represents. I'm more independent, if anything. Right. That's the way that it should be. You know, like you don't have to agree with everything that this person says to vote for that person. You understand compromise. You understand that people are on the platform. I don't have to vote for that person based on their platform. But I also understand that when they're in the office, they have to compromise. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that's one thing. We'll divide our country, but. Yeah, dude. And then that's one thing I try to do is every information I grab on Google, whether it's political or it's it's about how to make a pizza oven. Like I, I grab one thing that looks correct and then I purposely try to find something that proves that wrong. Yeah. Like I'm like consciously now I'm starting to do it, especially in the past year or so when I started this podcast is I'll look at one thing. And so, like, let's say if you know, we will use political as a as a reason because it's just easy. But if Donald Trump comes out and says one thing, I won't say that's wrong. I'll be like, hmm, that's interesting. Let me try to disprove that. And I'll try to disprove that. And if I search and search and can't disprove it, then I think, eh, it could be true. But I never say there's 100% certainty because right. someone probably, you know, put out that article. So it's like yeah. for someone to come on this platform and I hear it all the time because I follow a lot of podcasters and, and YouTubers just to kind of get inspiration. And you know, some of these clowns out here are just that look in this camera and just give so much passion into one specific topic without trying to get proved wrong. And it's right. like, bro, there's doctors out there that, you know, are getting proved wrong every day and they think something's right, right. but you know, they're it's doing just, something that's really that, mentality, man. And that's the one thing that yeah. frustrates me. There's so much information out there. There's so many different news outlets, whether they're real or not, you know, mm-hmm. there's 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 just so much information, you know, to the right. point where it's like you don't know what's fact and what's fiction. So, yeah, you can do as much research as you want, and I'm the same way. If I can't disprove it, then I, it, it could be true. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. could be. I don't know. And, you know, going back to social media, I, I don't want to say it's all bad. You know, with sure. the evolution of technology, you know, our business we rely heavily. Every business now relies heavily on social media, on the internet. Um, and you know, podcasts, it's, it's all social, mostly social media driven, you know, getting the yeah. attention. So that's been a lot of our, our marketing strategy has been based around social media because everybody, mostly everybody has at least some form of social media. Um, yeah. so it's not all bad, but you know, it's, yeah. it's the argument of what's good versus what's evil. Well, there's the, yeah, there's definitely, uh, I, I would probably say the vast, the vast majority of people understand the benefits of social media. Um, and of course some people are upset and all that, but what scares me the most about social media is it is a business and well, exactly. you know, it, it's like, you know, cause you hear about all these bands that have been going on and you know, mm-hmm. Twitter, Facebook, now they're making these bands, but then it's like social media is kind of like the host of a party that you want to go to. And at any moment they could tell you to leave no matter what you do. Yeah. And that's kind yeah. of terrifying. And yeah. the fact that we rely on these to drive our business, to drive our social life mm-hmm. is, it's kind of terrifying. So I think 
the the answer is not to censor people or not to remove people. I think the answer is to to give everyone that outlet, you know, to invite everyone to the party, right? Don't invite just a certain group of people to the party. Bring everyone in the party and then just let them let them do their thing because the answer to oh. you know, there's no, like less free speech I think is is stupid, but more free speech makes sense to me because if you're if you have 20 people that are on one side of the fence giving one specific idea, the only way to prove them wrong is to find 20 people that are on the opposing idea and let them, you know, rationally kind of talk through the the issues that they have. That's the only way to really solve a problem is to find opposing yeah. views, right? I agree. I agree. Yeah. But to a certain extent, um, right. just to kind of make a conversation, when it comes to social media, you know, you you have to give them approval <clears> to <throat> protect and to your microphone and your pictures. You know, they have a set of rules that you have to follow by. I would guarantee 99% of people do not read the terms and conditions <laughs> on social media. I guarantee it. Otherwise, you know, they would they would be like, well, I understand. You know, I, I said something racist and something that could be taken uh, offensive to other people. But, you know, Guilty, when it's yeah. done, it's like, well, yeah. So when it's done, it's like, oh, well, I'm being suspended for posting some ridiculous comments uh, that could be deemed racist or whatever. Well, why why are you limiting my free speech? Number one, freedom of speech obviously is your First Amendment right. And being a teacher and, and you know, teaching the subjects um, for the past five years and kind of looking at the government and I was in Mr. Beard's class and he was the first person I don't remember Mr. Beard. Oh yeah, Beard, um, yeah. <laughs> um, we're talking to him and, and I learned this first from him and as I've gotten older, I've gotten from the research and looked into it. You have freedom of speech. Obviously you can go out in the world, you can say whatever you want to say as long as you're not inciting a riot, as long as you're not hurting people. Um, and when you, the thing with social media is, yeah, you can post whatever you want, but there are consequences. Just there are consequences. If I go on an airplane, say, I do the word bomb, 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 bomb. Wherever the case is, you know, you have freedom of speech, but kind of. There's consequences. You know? Right, yeah. exactly. And I think that's where the line is kind of fuzzy with social media is there's so many people relying on this, on these platforms for information, but everybody has a different snippet of that information. So trying to figure out what's facts and what's just subjective opinion, that's mm -hmm. where it gets kind of blurred. Um, the reason why I, I respectfully disagree with with uh, not limiting uh, free speech is someone that looks at World War II, someone that looks at the Holocaust as something you know, as close to my family because uh, as I'm sure you know um, Judaism is obviously a religion so mm -hmm. I don't practice that but I've had family in the past that has um, I've had ancestors who um, were Russian they were from Russia they were uh, Russian Jews that came over here in the 1920s looking at that that's 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 the soft spot that I have you know for the Holocaust and if you have people that are just you know neo-nazis posting you know um, uh, that that was know, the right thing that's where I'm like okay now you're on yeah. a platform, obviously you can say whatever you want to say, but you can't say anything you want to say. Like there has to be some limitation. So that's where the line gets right. fuzzy is, is when, when do the powers that be in these social media apps, when do they step up? And when do they say, hey, you can't say that? Um, it's a responsibility that really falls on the person. Like, but then again, not everybody's going to see that as like, okay, you know? Yeah. Yes, freedom of speech is wrong, but I do agree with, with kind of policing the situation because after all it is a private business that has well, a to follow Yeah. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is, you know, whether you agree with it or not getting censored, I mean, you know, there's, there's two sides, right? Either a, it's going to open up the floodgates to where now they're going to get more strict and they're going to send to more people. But if that right. does happen, then, you know, again, I, I bring it back to like the metaphor of it's a party, right? Like if it's a if it's a party and everyone's there and everyone's having a good time and we're talking we're talking politics, we're talking podcasts, we're talking sports, we're talking all types of stuff at this party, and then one crazy dude from Animal House comes in yeah. in a toga, and he's you know yeah. flashing his dick around and you know he's he he's doing all these crazy wild things at this party. You don't want to keep him at the party because it might kill the vibe. So you got to kind of yeah. kick him out. Like there's, exactly. there's certain rules and regulations that we have to follow. And if you don't want to follow right. that, then you shouldn't be going to the fucking party. And exactly. that's where people kind of get a little squirrely because they're so used to Facebook and they're so used to social media as being these like 
everyday platforms that we spend time and energy on. But, you know, it is a private business. It's not your business. It's not the open market. It's not a park. You know, it's not like right. Central Park outside. Like we go to Central Park in New York and we hang out and we sit down and we have picnics and, you know, we bring our spouses and our kids and we play football with our families. But again, if a guy comes up butt ass naked, he's going to be removed. Why? Because he's going to ruin the vibe of the whole park. But yeah. we don't question that. Right. But why don't we question that? Why don't we just all walk around naked? Well, it's because there's some ethics that we have to follow. And, yeah. you know, just because it's on your phone doesn't mean we shouldn't follow it. And I think that's where right. people get a little clouded where we need to take yeah. a step back and, and relax. You know what I mean? Yeah, I for some reason that, that, that faceless interaction, that really kind of blurs the line in reality versus Oh, reality. for sure. You know, obviously, going back to when we were kids, you know, we used to use the term telephone tough guy because, you know, people would talk shit on the phone. And then when you see you in person, nothing ever happens. Right. I mean, it's the same concept now. It's just you've all the social media. You're a fucking social media tough guy. You're a troll looking for a fight. Chances are, I mean, there's a 99.9% .9 chance I am never going to see you if I don't agree with you. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it ends up like. So going back to free speech, I feel like. You know, you know those memes where it's like, be like Tom. If Tom disagrees, he just keeps scrolling. You don't have to post your comment. You know, you don't have to post what you're thinking. Sometimes it's okay just to say, okay, next. Uh, so yeah, it's it's. I think it's it. a lot of time to do with with your personality. You know, but then again, you got to speak up. You know, if you feel like you're personally being attacked, I mean, slander is a real thing. And if whether it's your race, whether it's your religion, whether it's your gender, I mean, you can speak up. That's that's what's great about being an American is you do have the right to say what's on your mind as long as you're not hurting anybody or inciting a riot. Yeah, man, that's it. And I think, you know, there's a lot of benefits to what social media has to offer. But yeah, to your point, we also heavily rely on it a lot and we don't have to comment. We don't have to do anything. You know, you can easily. And that's one thing I've been trying to do the last few months is get out of the habit of like me and my wife, we turn off our our phones at like 7, 8 p.m. We don't physically turn it off. We just put it on the other side and we don't, uh, we were in this habit of like being drones scrolling right. at 7 p.m., you know, right after dinner. And uh, we're in this habit now where we put it aside and we're, we're, we're vastly more happy, I would say, than we have been in a long time doing that just because if you look at something before you go to bed and you don't like it, you start thinking about that, you know, yeah. subconsciously. Yeah. And yeah. it could ruin your day. And I think we, we got to understand it's really not that important. Like social media, it's fun. It's cool to look at. There's a lot of good shit out there. But, you know, it's a great way to connect, not... too. You know, and that was the original yeah. intention was just a way to connect people. Right. Uh, and it's know, become on the, on the this. Business standpoint, yeah. Like it's become this. It's, it's an addiction. You know, like right. I call it the life. System. Everybody needs instant gratification. Uh, yeah. And what we try, what I try and teach, just not just kids but people in general is that you know depression is real it's a real thing and the more that you don't, you don't like who you are and you don't like how your life is if you're looking at someone else's life through that filtered lens you know you can get depressed well why am i not like that why am i not able to go in the world? why is my business not like that but mm -hmm. the great thing you get for business is you can be day one in a business and if you're great at creating content if you're great at marketing your company you can make yourself look bigger than most of the time. uh you can make yourself look bigger than you really are through that that filter lens on that social media so again you know what's good versus evil you have your great points but you also have your shitty points too um you know, mm -hmm. what it is. You know live your life tony <laughs> live your life steve <laughs> Live, live your life, Tony. Live it. Um, no, but dude, well, well said, man. Some good points there, and and uh, and I'm happy. I'm happy that you guys started this company, FreshAirMatters.com. You know, make sure if uh, friends out there listening, if I've given you any value over the course of uh, this year plus that I've done this podcast, go check out FreshAirMatters.com. I love the idea, man. I'm 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 stoked to kind of check it out myself, and I hope you can get, expand it across the country and get out to the East Coast. Um, yeah, yeah. and, uh, I know Instagram is at freshairmatters.com. I'll leave all the links in the description and stuff, but, uh, Steve, what's your personal Instagram in case people want to check it out? Yeah. My personal is, uh, just at the Oppenheim. Uh, just look, 
you know, what that means. and then, you know, Fresh Air Matters, just type it in the search engine. It'll pull up everything you need. Instagram is Fresh Air Matters. Fresh, uh, Facebook, uh, Fresh Air Matters 2019. LinkedIn, YouTube, all that stuff. Um, we're on oh, there. Um, nice. But the main thing is, you know, freshairmatters.com. Just open an air purifier, an air purification product. And then if you're in Dallas, Fort Worth, you know, you don't have to worry about changing air filters anymore. We do it for you. We have air duct cleaning. Everything that we offer is, is to benefit your health. And not only health, but to save you money. You know, people forget that the more packed your AC filter gets, the harder your HVAC unit has to work. And parts are intended to break down. Moving parts break down. Um, they don't need to break down as quickly as if they you didn't change your, your AC filter. Yeah, My, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, people don't realize that, you know, an HVAC's like a car, man. The more miles you put on it, Obviously, the more yeah. you got to change the oil, the more you got to change the tires, and more maintenance is going to cost you. So, the less your HVAC works, I mean, the better. I've, I've yeah, realized that I'm, I'm thankful I've never had to exchange an HVAC or uh, mm-hmm. get a new one in the houses oh, that I bought. Yeah, you're talking about thousands of dollars. Thousands, bro, and it's all you know. It's it's very easy. It's all about maintaining it. Like that's really right. exactly. that's just how simple it is. Exactly. Just take care of that shit. That's so, where we come in. That's matters. We do it for you. Hey. I like it, bro. Hey, yo, we, yo. Yeah. Um, yeah, we. But, dude, this was fun, man. We're over an yeah, hour and 12 yeah, minutes. Yeah. That's crazy. I look down, I'm like, eh, maybe half hour. I look down, I'm like, it's <laughs> over an hour. Dude, it's, it's a What's time that? zone in here, bro, for sure. Well, I, um, I would love to come on here more and talk to you, brother, man. I miss dude, you, man. You're, you're I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's been a long time. Let's not go another decade with yeah, doing this. Real. I got to meet the wife, man. I got to meet Brenda. Dude, next next time you guys come out to Orlando, I've been promising Justin yeah. that I'll do a uh, a fucking at least eighteen holes with him. But problem is, every time like he hits me up or something and he's about to go out, like I'm like, dude, I'm in Tampa, like I'm not, right. you know, I'm, yeah. I'm way too far. Dude, but he, Justin, he, the, the kids made it, you know. Uh, dude, he's, just going he's back and to me again. The kids made it. I mean, he's got beautiful wife, he's got beautiful daughter, one more on the way. He's got a, a, an amazing house. Uh, he's, he's the luckiest person in the world, as you know. Yeah. I mean, where he was versus where he is now, I'm just like, every time I see him and talk to him, I'm like, man, you are so lucky to be where you are. Obviously, he's worked his ass off to get where he is, but without kind of giving away his business, man, we both know how lucky oh. that, that kid is. And I talk yeah. to him, I'm just like, man, I, I, I look up to you. You know, you made it. You really busted your ass to get where you are. And I mean, you really are the American dream. Yeah, um, dude. Just, you know, we all. We don't talk as much as I would like, you know, a couple times a year we'll talk. And then whenever I go down there, we kind of hang out for a few hours. Uh, but that happens. That's life. You know, things change. People evolve. Ideals change. Yeah. Families are formed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the one cool thing, as much shit as we're talking about social media, the one cool thing about this digital and technological age that yeah. we're in is is this yeah. right here. At least we can connect virtually. And, yeah. um, you know, your job secure as a teacher uh, virtually yeah. and there's a lot of great benefits. So I think we, we definitely need to do this more cause it was fun. And I think listeners are going to get some value out of it. It was a good time. Definitely. Definitely. But, uh, Sounds great. I love you. Dude, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate you. And, uh, uh I'll definitely man. stay in touch more. It. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks man. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Enjoy the weekend, man. Yeah, right, that was Steven Oppenheim. And of course we had Greg on, uh, for a little bit, but, uh, they are founders of fresh air matters. Make sure you check them out. Uh, really cool company. Great idea. Uh, you know, it's, it's a brand new startup company out of Texas, but go to freshairmatters.com and they have tons of great products uh, that you could check out that they ship nationwide. Go to freshairmatters.com and, um, and be sure to check those guys out. So Steve, Greg, thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate you.